disruptors and curious minds. Welcome to another episode of Thinking on Paper. My name is Jeremy Gilbertson. Uh, I'm a founder of something called Write to Know You. I like to write and think and uh, process what the heck is going on in the world. With me as always is Web3 writer for hire, Mark <laughs> Fielding. He's even got a tagline in, in it there. Mark and I, uh, Mark and I uh, do this every week, every Thursday. You can find all the old episodes on Spotify and YouTube, Thinking on Paper.xyz. Mark, uh, tell these guys before we get into this, tell everyone about the book club too. I want to make sure everyone knows what's going on there. Well, it's, it's funny you mentioned the book club because um, as you can see, yeah, Web3 writer for hire. I've been doing some personal writing this week. I've been exploring Web3 collaborative writing platforms again. And I, I don't know if it's because of the book club because in the book club, we're reading a book called The Design of Everyday Things. And it's all about UX and design. And you should come and join us. But I just keep noticing bad design everywhere oh I go. Everywhere. Like, everywhere. Every, every, and, and Web3 is so guilty of this. And I know there's been a, this pivot over the last year and everyone's moving away from connect with wallet. And now everyone's hidden the connect with wallets. So now you just connect with your, with your Google because there's no connect with wallets. So we've all, we're kind of going backwards on a lot of these websites and they're just going more Web2, not Web3. And... I, I've just, yeah, frustratingly bad UX. And hopefully our book club and our amazing guest today, Janina Vinclary, can help us get some better, more immersive, engaging user experience in Web3. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, quick shout out to our friends at Ripple, W-R-I-P-P-L-E, Marketing's On Demand Talent Platform. These guys have over 3,000 vetted uh, interdisciplinary specialists to help your organization flex out on a project or even a longer term engagement. They have a teams function now where they can quarterback these interdisciplinary teams and they're awesome. Uh, w R I P P L E dot com. Without further ado, Mark Web3 writer for higher fielding, <laughs> please introduce our guest and we'll I bring her on. Ed, I can't even edit that out. Um, yeah. Welcome Janita Vinclary. Um, our guest today, she's a Web3 marketing and immersive experience ambassador for Exclusible, which I think a lot of our listeners who are especially those joining from LinkedIn are aware of Exclusible. Um, she's a growth leader at Vividly Space, a web development agency, which I think a lot of the thing, a lot of the brand activations she's gonna speak about today are involved in those two companies quite a lot. And perhaps one of the more interesting things, she's a core contributor to various Web3 communities, most notably at the moment, Women in Web3 Switzerland, which is, um, passionate about more diversity in the Web3 space. So that's exciting. Welcome, Janina. Hello, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction and what a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for invitation to join. Let's spill the beans. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. I like it. Let's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's get started. So um, tell you what, let's just dive right into some of this brand stuff because um, there are a lot of folks listening right now that that you know some have maybe explored Web three immersive experiences like right when the right when everything hit back in the day and then you know have kind of dropped off when you know a lot of the a lot of the bad stuff happened right a lot of people doing nefarious things with new technology and all of that kind of stuff but now it's kind of like, well, hey this stuff is kind of sticking around a little bit what what do brands need to think about just from a high level to kind of tiptoe into this and then let's talk about some specific examples of how you've led some brands through this and uh yeah let's start spilling the beans as you say uh yes it's exciting because of course as the emerging tech is evolving uh, so are evolving also different uh, approaches and different strategies so a couple of years ago people were building uh, on different platforms and called it metaverse now we just simplify and say it's gamified and immersive be it on spatial be it on roblox but still, it's here. So people like when it's more that they can immerse ourselves. And of course, the new Apple Vision Pro is coming. That's absolutely totally different world. And I had also posted about that uh, earlier today. Uh, let's focus on what brands did last year, what they did successfully. And I can comment on exclusive uh, experience because I'm part of the team. And these are the conversations we are having with different brands. So we have... Uh, different numbers but there's a stable audience and it's a global audience on roblox so we have around let's say those um 60 70 million uh gen z gen alpha 
uh, it's not only, you know, uh, below 18, so uh, it's 18, 25. So good around like 40, 50% are exactly that 18, 25 uh, years old audience. And they just grew up with Roblox and they expect to meet uh, to meet them where they are. And one of the latest very successful examples is Paris Hilton that is in her uh, early 40s, actually, let's be frank. Is she is she in her early, early 40s already? I remember when she was 20. I know, me too. I remember <laughs> her 20, maybe, you know, in early 30s, but, you know, 10 flies. <laughs> yeah. Just saying that... Um, She's exactly uh, following the trends and she launched uh, something special and fun for Hilton and it attracted already 1 million visitors and very high engagement uh, rate around 25, 27% and it's all organic. So I think she reached a, a wonderful audience. And on top of that, not only she launched something fun, gamified and immersive, but also she distributed loyalty points. And that's exactly what we can say. These are the Web3 ethos. So now we can talk about these blurry lines between gaming, immersive experiences and Web3 uh, elements. That's really interesting. And I, and I think the, 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 the loyalty add on to this experience is 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 probably the the interesting thing to consider because I, whenever whenever I think about you know an online experience or even an experience if we're meeting in person like what is a meaningful interaction right and what does a meaningful interaction mean when you know you and I sit down for coffee how do we it, that's kind of subjectively defined but how do we define a meaningful interaction this goes beyond engagement just like oh four people looked at it like how can we start thinking of quantifying meaningful interaction in in some of these spaces oh what a big topic to unpack but you know if we look uh, on the marketing basics at the end of the day we marketers look on the time spent on our website you know this is what we can measure i can't measure uh time spent on my social media posts at the moment i don't know maybe their tools send send these to me i would love to use those but as a marketer i measure time spent on my website and you know according to different estimates you, if they spend around five to six minutes it's really good and Paris Hilton, I think she broke that record. I don't remember the, the, the numbers precisely, but the, the time people spent within that Roblox immersive experience was uh, more than seven minutes. So it was maybe around between uh, 10 to 15. And that's a lot. So people are enjoying the experience. And this is the stickiness with the brand. And um, marketing is all about creating those touch points with the customers. And it's also a lot about world, word of mouth. So if it was organic traffic, so it means that the user were enjoying the experience it was fun it was cool it was worth it they were starting to suggesting it to someone else and uh, of course not to forget to mention that Roblox soon will have ads so it's basically turning like into YouTube or into Instagram TikTok that will offer ads as well so you can uh, think about different ways how to enter Roblox so it doesn't have to be let's say full game I mean, if you want to as a brand, why not? It's 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 cool, but it can be in-game items, so you can tap into successful gamified experiences that are out there that are very much loved, and you can see the stats. They are amazing analytic platforms to see how many million users, how much time they spend, what's the engagement rate, rate, and then you can just offer I don't know your T-shirts, uh, um, backpacks, sunglasses, hats, you know. Well, just starting with the small items, and that doesn't cost a million. They, they, this is a marketing budget that many managers have already in their hands. Yeah, just looking at the, yeah, the, on the stats for Slivingland and the average session, 25 minutes, which yep. is a, that's a long time. I mean, people aren't just clicking in and clicking out. So do we deduce that these are mostly Paris Hilton fans that are checking this out mostly. And then I, I wonder what was the goal because this is for Hilton hotels, correct? So do we, was it, for, was it for them an experiment? Do they expect to drive a lot of bookings to their hotels? Was it more of a, um, an experiment for Paris Hilton? Do you know, do you know what their goals were when they set out for this? 
Oh, sure. Look, I don't know exactly their goals because I, I was not lucky to work with them. But again, I can share my assumptions. So first of all, I think those people who spend that time on the platform, they are not our age. They don't know what Paris Hilton is, most probably. <laughs> they, they just maybe think, oh, my God, it's, uh, it's, it's just, just a person. They don't know the story because, of course, we grew up and we followed her more. Yeah. We know all the funny things, you know, that happened along the way and how the brand grew and evolved. Uh, so I think they came uh, because the experience was fun and engaging. So first of all, Roblox, it's all about the game itself. And you have to build a game. You know, have to. It's, it's, so in general, what I've seen within the last six to nine months, it's all about focus on the game itself and the and gamification elements. It's less about this um, play to earn. So people are not coming, I assume, not coming because they want those loyalty points. They're coming because it's well done. It's aesthetically well done. It's appealing uh, for the audience. And if they can earn additional points, I think they're staying for longer. I mean, what you said, that these numbers are impressive, 25 minutes. When you, well, if you think about this, like as a, as a, you know, put your, put your CMO hat on for a second and uh, for, for the last, I don't even know how many years, uh, marketers put together advertisements, right. That, that, that appear on, you know, television commercials on radio and largely you're spending like millions of dollars or a million dollars on something that everyone tries their best to avoid. And if yeah. you just like think about that just right off the bat, it's like, okay, when someone's in a brand world for 20 to 25 minutes, that's like, wow. Because usually we're running the other direction, like skip, skip, skip. So um, is 100% agree. 100% Jeremy. Exactly. This is the pivotal point we have to understand because the rules are changing. I mean, first of all, because this uh, audience is growing, it's for them is so native. But then uh, we can we can look and see how many of those people, let's say this audience, 10 to 25 to 30 years old, how many of them now watch news on the TV, listen to the radio, um, no, they don't. You can't reach them on those channels. So first of all, I mean, if you want to reach that audience, you have to be where they are. So in the best case, it's social media and YouTube, and then it's Roblox. You don't actually, I mean, there are the stats. So they spend two to three hours daily on Roblox. And this is your airtime. And this is where you can get them. And then actually only on the second, third place comes the TikTok, YouTube, or Instagram. Maybe they do watch Disney TV still with their parents or, or, or I mean, listen to the Spotify. Uh, but the stats are like, the, there's just a big shift happening because this is the digital native audience that grew. And also what I listened last week when I was attending events parallel to World Economic Forum in Davos, um, very senior executives uh, shared the, that they see it with their children. And this is the next thing that we will have more of these in-game uh, collectibles, digital items. They will want to move and shift around. And we could talk about interoperability, how you move from one game to another game, how you send those assets from one friend to another, and then which layer we use, uh, bridging, you know, uh, messaging, uh, e-commerce evolving there. So it was mentioned for sure that this is the next thing to consider. Absolutely. And it's active, Jeremy, as well. Whereas the adverts of our day, passive, and they had to be engaging, they had to have a hook. It's still passive. This is active engagement. That's 25 minutes of active engagement, which is pretty scary if you spread that out across the whole of Roblox and every brand. Um, with the, I mean, we've spoken about interoperability, so we're moving into blockchain. And could you speak us through the loyalty program for this? Is it, um, where are the loyalty points redeemable? Um, are these Ro Roblox loyalty points? Are these for Ho Hilton Hotels? Are they in any way similar to the Starbucks Odyssey loyalty points? W will they be, I mean, these aren't tokens, are they? Uh, exciting stuff. We would need to try, uh, dive into that together with Flaunt. But again, I'm observing Flaunt, so the platform they use for the last year. And they started as a very similar platform for, let's say, any brand to enter. Uh, for token gated experiences to uh, merge the online and offline in real life events and offline online activities. 
And then at some point, I think a couple of months ago, for them, maybe it was half a year ago, they pivoted to Roblox because they understood this is the future, you know, and uh, happy to see that because, you know, each and every platform is deciding their own strategy and their own, you know, approach for the next couple of years. Some are focusing on e-commerce, some are focusing on tickets or some other stuff. So Flount is doing this for the Roblox. And I think this is the layer that Roblox was missing. And now uh, I think most probably this is just one of the companies that is offering that. There may be more startups, but just flaw. And it's, it's more on my radar on LinkedIn. They're doing more um, active stuff in US and in other countries. So I think it's it's just coming this, this merge of like the Web3 and immersive experiences and all the innovative technology. I'm curious also about uh, Apple Vision Pro. But I think that's a conversation for the next time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, that I definitely want to. We should actually have a show where we're all in Apple Vision Pros, provided by uh, some generous sponsor that we can play with. I, I think we'll have to do a series on Apple Vision Pro. Obviously, Neil Redding was speaking about it. I think our guest last week was speaking about it. Yeah, when it when it's available, we'll have a series. So let's... You know what, I just want to add to this one. So about Apple Pro, what I like about their marketing, because we're marketing people here, right? So they started with the very easy features. So literally like you wear a headset and then you look on your pictures or you look on the videos and you can zoom them in and just feel more immersed in the environment. And then also these features, like you can take a call, um, while you're wearing a headset and it's so easy to do and you can do all the other things. It's basically like your computer but with a, with a headset. And this is what I like because it's fundamental shift from every other. So because now also our show is about uh, XR, you know, so all of the different uh, immersive experiences. And it's a different approach that others did. So for example, MetaQuest, they went all in into, let's say, only those high level immersive experiences, only, you know, like um, very well done. And they didn't think about those easy things which you could do as well, right? It's just, I don't know, I'm having a call if I could take a call. So this is this is what I saw. It was a fundamental shift. And obviously Apple is aiming for both. They're aiming to, to serve there for simple things. And also they're aiming to do the gamified experiences with a with a set as well. This, yeah, this is such a really this is such a great point. So um, if you want to learn more about this point that I'm about to talk about, you need to listen to the first season of our book club with uh, with Julio Tino's book, uh, The Nexus, which is which talks about just different ways of interdisciplinary thinking, stacking teams. But one of the important messages I got out of that book was. Anything new, any new technology has to be grounded and rooted in how people are currently navigating the world, right? So that's a prime example of like, hey, you know, here's what this can do and here's how it affects the simple things that you're doing every day. Of course, we want to see, oh, wow, where, where, you know, where can this thing go? But like the majority of people are like, what can I do? How, how can this help me on a daily basis? So I think that's a really great call out. Absolutely, absolutely. And actually, this is a knowledge through their Apple Watch as well, in a way, because it was a watch, one of the first ones, if not the first, where we could uh, read a message, you know, take an answer a call or just like ch like check in what's what's with our phone. Right. So they started to merge these uh, different devices already with the watch, you know, and I think that is very innovative. So this is basically they follow the same um, approach, but they do it really, really well. We got to be careful about talking too much on Apple because Mark, right. Mark's vein in his head might start like popping. He doesn't like those guys that much. <laughs> no, but, um... <laughs> I didn't say that. I just use Android. <laughs> but, um, should we? Should we? Um, I don't know where to go because before you came on his call, you said something really interesting, which n not so much brand related, but maybe brands can learn something from it. And you said that gener the the new generation, gen generation Alpha, gener they don't want to give their time away for free. They don't, unlike us who was showing our age, we'll click buttons and go anywhere and you know take our day to do what you want. But the next generation don't think like that. Why do, why? <laughs> do we know why? I think also our generation is changing. I did uh, an event activation uh, with a QR code and uh, that was with a pop, you know. Uh, I hope everybody knows pop. If not, go and check it out. Pop, it's free of charge. You can do QR codes at events. And uh, we were just saying, oh, you can scan a QR code and afterwards you will. And like personally, right away, like, 
why should I do that? You know, and the person was around the level 40s, 50s. So people are, I think, also like um, millennials and 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 uh, older. They're also already now becoming more picky, more more curious. Like, why should I do something? if I won't get rewarded for that or just like, you know, another thing that I, I won't use. So of course, and we had to tell, oh, there will be future benefits you will be able to unlock. So even actually with our Web3 approaches that we have planned the program, we know that there will be future benefits and token gating, people are reluctant. But I think with the uh, youngest generations, they learn it a bit faster. And actually that quote was from the New York Times. Um, and uh, I think they're just, seeing the strand and acknowledging that and just more highlighting it i think it's just more um again coming from gamification where they can earn points and then uh, spend their points and now they expect it from the brands as well so why should i do something for the brand if i'm not rewarded and i think red 3 exactly offers this solution you can be recognized you can be rewarded you can trade your points. You can send your points to someone else. I think it's it's a no-brainer, isn't it? I, I think it's... I mean, Jeremy, I, I don't know if this is for you, but recently I saw a study and asked kind of young 11, 12-year-old kids what they want to be when they're older. And, that, and they're not saying rock star. They're not saying pilot. They're not saying fireman, police lady, whatever. They're saying I want to be an influencer, a lot of yeah. them. And I think that this... I'm not going to do anything for nothing is possibly correlated to Instagram influencers, TikTok, where they see these people being rewarded for micro brands. And that's kind of filtering out across a generation where now, OK, they've seen how it can be and they want to part. That's my theory. Yeah, just chiming in on that. I think it's been a, it's been a long time coming um, there. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a bit of a kind of a tech nerd and like back in the day i think it was out of mit there was something called open mustard seed where they where they started putting together um infrastructure that allows you to protect access to your data right and you could create different personas and i could let janina see certain aspects of my data i could let mark see certain aspects of my data but i would charge mark because he's going to do he's going to make money on my data janina is not so this is that's been around and there's another thing i don't know if you've ever heard of this guy K Mikey M like the letter K Mikey M he did an experiment I don't know like eight years ago where he sold bits of his attention and decision making to people so he was like an index fund this was before blockchain before anything and he was like he was like all right uh you guys say Janine and Mark own uh a bit of my decision making and attention he would put out these things hey should I shave my beard today um, should I ask uh, Jennifer out in my office or should I ask Melissa out? And they would direct like his attention because they bought stock in him, which is like, so I think a lot of these experiments have been it's like, a fascinating bubbling idea. up. Yeah. It is fascinating. I think just now the scale is larger, so it's just yeah. easier to do and more accessible for sure. Yeah. yeah. Janina, what do you think about when people say like when a, when a brand says, well, you know, why would anyone care about a digital collectible, like a digital thing? Like who, like, why, why would someone want a digital version of, you know, this sweatshirt to wear in the digital world? Like what, what, how do you, how do you try and get people to understand that actually kid, like the younger generations are actually caring about some of that stuff? I know. Look, it might sound again weird for us, but for them, it's different. They grow with uh, with the digital tools, you know, their phones, computers, and that's the world for them. And uh, there are many studies when they say, look, I have these uh, a couple of friends online I've never met. And these are my best friends and they have maybe one or two best friends in the real life. So for them, it's just the different the environment that they're growing. And uh, uh, we just have to you know, respect and acknowledge that it's the, like when I was growing up, uh, I didn't have all of, all, of, all of these things available and that they play there. They collaborate in Roblox. And again, I know very intelligent families and their kids are reading many books and, and they're doing well at school and they're traveling, they're doing sports and many activities. But still, their kids are on Roblox those one or two hours per day. You know, they just like it. They just love it. This is how they still connect with the other friends also on, on Roblox. So um, it's just, 
it's just i think uh technology evolved it's more accessible and it's i think also because the experience is really fun and also i worked with employee engagement the more you engage with employees the more they feel oh uh that's that that's fun that's great and the more they want to open up and give back to the company i mean whatever like we like to play we always like to play games human i'm how many table games do we know on the sports and everything we, we are as a human species species something like we want to collaborate and we want to win and want to share that win right so i think it's just the next or the tech is just adding these possibilities isn't it we're fun machines well i am yeah let's talk about macy's i think you, you have a lot of um a love for what macy's have been doing recently janina could you could you speak us through through that I, i've never been to macy's it's an american shop right it is so jeremy has been is haven't you I have been to Macy's. Yes, I have. All right. And, so and was you very, it's been a very long time, though. I, I'm not a mall <laughs> guy. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, they're one of the good examples um, that could be, in a way, easily copied. So what I decided, to, I mean, they have quite a few Web3 and NFT initiatives, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, they're not the ones that are just, you know, uh, trying things out. So what they did and what went well last year is um, they decided they developed immersive experience on their website. So people don't need to go to any platforms. They just uh, could land on the website. It's a gamified experience that they were walking through New York and they could see uh, different outfits and they could collect different points. So once again, um, this uh, motion of, oh, I collected something, I want something. And afterwards they could uh, save those points for the next experiences. And this is something that uh, we as exclusive team see more often that uh, brands don't, if they don't want to start with Roblox or Spatial or any other platform, you know, you name it, there are quite a few. Um, they can do it on their website and still it's immersive, it's gamified, it's like e-commerce, but with this exploration layer. And actually, this is something they could do. For example, imagine you have a new store opening in New York or Los Angeles or Paris or London or Sydney or Singapore, whatever, you name it, in any city in the world. And you invested so, so much money already in that shop, you know, to make it beautiful to make it, you know, like the experience and everything. So the storytelling is there. And now imagine taking the story, the same storytelling and the same experience like that in real life to your website and just replicating it, inviting everyone to that shop opening, you know. I think this is like, not many brands have done this. And I think it's like, look, it, it doesn't cost you a million. We're talking about, let's say, 50 to 100,000, right? And you invest in that new shop already, like a lot of money, and you could invite everyone, you know? And this is like the, the marketing, and these are the experiences that you feel like, oh, well, like, I've been there, you know? I think it's it's another way how to uh, brands, for brands to build a connection, not only in that particular, uh, particular uh, city and shop, but also globally. You like that connection. And I think this is where Jeremy speaks about bi-directional value exchange in that connection. Is it not, Jeremy? Well, I think I, I always I'd love to get your take on this, Janina, too, because I think about this as kind of new audience infrastructure for brands. Right. So so if I have a brand and you two are my customers, right, you two are my audience. And I'm able to not just build a, a one-time broadcast connection because I'm just like shouting at you, not shouting, but just like through ads and all of that. Hey, come buy my stuff, come buy my stuff. Instead, I'm actually building a permanent connection to you guys that I could, you know, that I could um, kind of level up. Janina, if you're super active and you engage more than Mark, you get more things, you get to get pulled into more decisions, maybe like, I don't know, I think it'd be interesting yeah. to kind of almost ground up a brand with a community and find a way to reward and level up people because that's what you do in games. It's story and, and then and it's experiences to like win or or complete, right? And the real Absolutely. and the real fans, the real aficionados stick with it because all all of the the flaky for, who aren't really interested they they disappear and what you're left with is kind of like dilutes down to your true f brand fans i guess yeah sure and they deserve to be rewarded i believe in that share the wealth share the share the bounty 
I think this is this is what like all of those big brands on Nike is doing that. So more about co-creation and rewarding the the, the people who co-create, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. On so brands, here's another piece that that you know brands have always tried to figure out this relationship. And I and I worked with a lot of brands over the last 15 years to help them figure out kind of a music strategy, right? Music partnerships, um, you know, maybe a custom song from an artist or whatever it is. How are brands leveraging, you know, music in these experiences, or are they? And, you know, where, where can we think, where, where's that world going to head? Do you think? Oh, that's a beautiful question about music. Uh, a good one. Look, I have not that much paid attention to music. You know, I'm a very visual person. I like music a lot, but I'm more a visual person. So for example, I tried myself, uh, Amazon experience on Roblox, you know, mm. and I, and, and I remember a little bit and also I tried, Oh my God, Lamborghini experience. They launched it also recently, living a month ago. I remember the visual, but I don't remember the music. I think it's just like uplifting and just uh, like usually in the gamified experiences, it's more like in the background and neutral. But I think this is an untapped opportunity because I would actually uh build the bridge like to the filming industry so at the end of the day your roblox experience is like watching a movie or being engaged in a movie and and movies they have to have a good music and of course that's what we have for all of the awards name it oscar or bafta or any other we have these categories like best song and 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 uh best regional song and 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 and, and all of the other so maybe actually in a few years we will have a, an industry for immersive experiences, for gaming, songs, and, and and music, for that, isn't it fun? I think I think it really could be. There's there's definitely something there. And I've been into. I went into recently. I think it was in Horizon World. I think they have like a music area where they've basically built this virtual complex that has multiple venues in it, and you can go into each of the venues and see what else is going on. When you get into the venue, it's a nice 360 video, but it's like. It's still I think I think that whole world has a long way to go to try and figure out the magic of live music in, in digital. Right. Because it's it's you can't replace being in a in a in a concert hall with your buddies. You know, the lights go down, they come up. I mean, that feeling is is going to be hard to replicate. Where's the where's the, the, the modern version of MySpace? Where MySpace was a musical platform that utilized social media, but yet the, since then there has been no universal place where new bands, new singers can come and make music the important thing. I think Janina just hit the button on her there when she said that music's almost in the background in a lot of these things. Maybe there needs to be a new... I remember going around Decentraland on my own because there was nobody there except me. But there was quite a lot of musical activations in there, some interesting immersive musical experience happening. But obviously the, the, the wind got knocked out of its sails. Maybe there's an opportunity there. I mean, we, we, we spoke to Dead Mouse's manager, didn't we? There are musicians doing this. There are big brands, big bands collaborating with brands oh but you know things. what then it goes into again this the other roblox example so um oh my god uh, if i remember the name correctly so uh zara larson so she's swedish singer and she's very popular in europe and maybe also in us for sure you know a couple of her songs and she did an activation and she earned i don't know don't remember her precisely one or two million by selling either the in-game items or her merch by doing this and again like when i think oh my god like like that's a lot of money yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's one or two million just by doing an activation on roblox but of course she has a fan base right so uh i think in total she has around eight million followers on um instagram i don't i don't know her tiktok though so just saying that um uh, there is a space for musicians to come and to do the activations. And also, by the way, the recent Eminem concert also on Roblox. So like, and Eminem is 50. He's at least 50. How, how did that go down? Was that well received, the Eminem concert? Good question. I've, I would need to check the stats. But I, I don't think he would even like consider going there if not the, you know, um, I don't think it was not uh, calculated, you know, it must, it must have been a strategic move. Yeah. So speak, so speaking of like, we talked earlier about grounding new tech in, um, you know, 
existing systems, existing means of navigating the world, so to speak. Marketing departments usually have like a media buy decision, right? So they have a message that they put together. If we talk about traditional ads, you know, all right, what's the creative, what's the message, and then where are we putting it? So if we think about these digital platforms as as media buys, um, how would you how would you advise somebody from like a from like a I know you've done some Roblox stuff, but then there's Fortnite Islands. Um, there's there's all kinds of these different platforms that are out there. What are a couple besides Roblox that could be compelling, and why would someone consider a me, a, a media buy there if we if we call it that? Sure. So again, there are a couple of strategies to unpack. So the easiest are these in-game items. So uh, for example, there's a clothing brand, uh, fashion, luxury. They can start small and it's around literally those um, 40 to 50,000. And that would be uh, the cost for the game. And of course, and then uh, the team they would decide to collaborate with would advise which game or they can together uh, pick and choose the game they go after. So um and again this is basically tapping into a very successful game you know and just offering them the free of charge items this is basically like uh, now someone would offer me a free of charge nft artwork you know and i like collecting i like artworks and if that's free of charge it was like oh wow but it could be for example in my case that might have been sponsored by let's say alcohol company or food and beverage company you know or i would accept also fashion you know i don't mind but just just saying that i see more and more fashion brands entering also followed by food and beverage companies by the way, not to forget uh, many food and beverage companies exploring that. And Exclusible has a, a very successful example with the Sour Patch Kids. Um, I think it's just uh, starting small and then when they feel more comfortable, of course, then they go for the full game, right? But it's just more time. It's a bit more expensive. And uh, of course, that could be like Macy's did, something like that. And that's more of the journey platform. And if it's very important to have very good aesthetics, good quality, you know, so like I would advise if you go for that, if you invest in this, go for a very good quality. Don't do it halfway. I think that that won't work. Don't go for like if you want to do immersive, you want to let definitely have quality. You definitely want to work with the people who know their stuff. So these would be my two cents. I think um, I, I write for LV Mash and a lot of the, the LV Mash brands have done activations. Um, they call it the test and learn process, whereby you, you do an activation. It's an experiment. You learn from it. You move on. You build from that for the next iteration of that. It might be something completely different. It might be a, a build on what came before if it worked. It's, it's very much that an experimental process using these activations as part of a wider brand strategy or a marketing strategy um i, I you know it, I, th I think that it doesn't become all of it I was, you're talking about media by jeremy i don't know as a percentage i think it probably depends on perhaps your your industry luxury might spend more than Sure. A, a musical instrument, perhaps. I don't know. Sure. sure. Food and beverage. I don't know. But of course, I think we have to be clear of whom we are going after. So what is our target audience? Is it rather uh, younger than 30 or older than 40? And this is a difference, you know. So, for example, uh, some other brands, what they do, they still do digital passports with NFTs, authentication of goods. Uh, they do the art, you know, they, they merge these worlds like, you know, you, you, you buy this an item, you get, I don't know, an artwork, you know, alongside. So there are so many possibilities. And I think like what I like about these uh, Web3, Web2.5 uh, tools and approaches, because they're so creative, you can get, you, you can do so many fun things. You can tap into each other's audiences. You can invite an artist, you can invite, I don't know, um, um, I don't know, it could be also, by the way, uh, a musician, a brand. And I also, by the way, what I see, like many, many more and more of those uh, famous uh, artists, they create their own brands and they're very successful with that. And again, I think it's, it's going to be uh, a lot of collaboration, a lot of uh, tapping into each other's audiences and doing campaigns together. Cross-pollination. I love yeah. that idea. I think that, that idea of 
piggybacking on other brands, working with other brands, musicians, other artists, other creatives is a big, big part of Web3. You were in Davos recently at the World Economic Forum. How did this all go down with people outside of our Web3 echo chamber? How was it received by people on the fringes of of the talks that you gave and the, and the panels that you were on? Good question. I think sometimes I'm a little bit too much in my bubble of Web3. <laughs> and that's a good thing. The bubble was big. So there were at least five, six, seven venues talking about Web3. Of course, uh, Web3 and AI, you know, because it's, it's, it's very much together, you know. So one is facilitating the other. Uh, and uh, this is how it's going to be because the, all of the texts at the end of the day are going to be connected, you know. So um, there were a lot of AI, a lot. But still, as I said, there were these people that saying, look, uh, I mean, of course, the attendees were more like 30 plus. Of course, they were attendees 20 to 30, but more it's a 30, 40 plus event. But still, they were saying this. But like, if you look at the younger generation, they are expecting this. This is how they see the world. This is how they engage and, and dynamics are changing. So there were a few conversations, but mainly, of course, it was uh, about AI, uh, leadership, diversity. Uh, how can we solve the global problems? We, have, we were talking today about the fun stuff, but of course, in Davos, there were many more topics. Yeah, but it was an interesting experience, though, to be to be in Davos. M it's must a have... lively part. I think this is super fun. It's a, it's a very international, friendly, uh, super super cool atmosphere. Almost vindication that the web three web three space is still. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cruising on. Oh, definitely, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think the the interesting thing to me too, as we as we kind of kind of wrap up all the stuff that we've been talking about with this is that, you know, these, these technologies are out there and they're available and, uh, you know, the, the smart way is to kind of do these little pilots and tests and that sort of thing. Um, but you, you got to match it to your audience and you got to attach a, a clear KPI to it. Right. Um, what, what, speaking of the, you know, key performance indicators, you know, picture of success, that sort of thing. What are some examples that some, some of the brands that you've worked with or that you've researched, what are they calling a a successful outcome for one of these pilots? Because I know you can't you can't really say, "Hey, I want to drive sales to a million bucks." Like, but like, what are what are some of the baby stepped kind of outcomes that they're looking for? Sure. So uh, from the exclusive experience, what I've seen this is the the engagement rate and the time they spent within the game, how many people came to the game, and actually, if you look on the numbers it's way cheaper per person per visit per user than ads so that's like unbeatable and this is the message we need to get across you know because with the ads you don't know i mean you just sometimes you just buy the views but you don't know how long was that view right so was it one second was it like 10 seconds um so i think that the numbers are good because the audience is different you know, because you reach right away you are uh, in a, in a, in front of million of eyes right if you buy for example successful in game items um what else uh, uh, so i attended a panel with aminoki brand ceo jet siu and what um, they discussed with uh, one more big player is that uh, it's going to be a lot for sports brands uh, to onboard their fans and for fan engagement and the same. Uh, so to give loyalty points, to give out collectibles. And it's just a question of time until all of the sports brands will be onboarded. But I think that's the next big thing. And even you look at the sports, you see like it all comes together once again. Because when you watch sports, you see um, ads of finance, uh, food and beverage, um, car industry, you know, uh, automotive, like like fashion everything you know at the end of the day when you when you are in the sports industry it's 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 everything being advertised there yeah absolutely and and you know one of the brands that one of the sports organizations that not many people are, know about yet but a lot of people on a global scale but a lot of lacrosse fans like myself so i, I play lacrosse i coach lacrosse the premier lacrosse league um has been doing 
experiments and building things in using these mechanics for like the last two years. Yeah. So if anyone wants to learn more about that, we got a great episode with Brendan Coleman uh, that you guys can check out. But yeah, I agree with you on the sports side. It's like it's it's ripe uh, for that kind of uh, that kind of additional engagement. Well, this has been this has been a fascinating chat, Janine. I know uh, we always want to be mindful of time because uh, you know it looks like you got a lovely evening uh, behind you, uh, getting ready to head out and do some things. But uh, this has been awesome. I think it's a great way for brands to learn a little bit more about that, and we'll do a great show right up where people can uh, hopefully interact with you should they want to learn more about what you guys are doing and how to navigate this space. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and a last shout out to our friends at Ripple, W-R-I-P-P-L-E, Marketing's On Demand Talent Platform. Again, 3,000 plus vetted solopreneur, solopreneur creative uh, individuals that can help you scale a project. Mark and I are actually on the platform. So if you like what you hear from us, you know, jump in there and, and, and see what's what. <laughs> Again, we're here every Thursday uh, talking with a wonderful new guest and Mark, give us uh, give us a little last shout out about the book club. Tell them, tell them what's going on there, what we're doing. Yeah, the, the book club, we're still reading the design of everyday things about UX. There's a lot to be taken in and be used in the immersive and Web3 space. So if you're interested in that at all, thinking on paper dot X, Y, Z. Uh, yeah, next few weeks, we've got some good guests. We've got um, Aragorn, who I can't pronounce his second name yet. I need to learn this. Uh, <laughs> Mulu Jenkins next week and then in a couple of weeks we have Betty from Good for um Dead Fellows hopefully so we've got some great guests coming we up. We actually have uh, we um, also have Toa Dunn uh from Toa Dunn head Toa of music Dunn, yeah. of Riot Games doing a, a bunch of awesome stuff uh on his own now uh so that that'll be really fun. So yeah, check us out thinking on paper at xyz uh book club stuff. Actually we decided to basically push the book club out for free. Um yep, so uh, all the episodes for the Nexus the first uh, book that we read all eight chapters will be up on spotify later this week and then every monday we'll put out a new episode of the book club and uh yeah we'll keep having fun if you're keeping having fun uh stay disruptive stay curious keep thinking yes, on paper absolutely. love that take it easy guys see Bye. you next time